So this one is mostly about banking metals, being your own bank, but there is a little bit of buffalo hunting in here too. One of the reasons that I give for buying gold is as a backup. So if the economy collapses, well, I have some precious metals. Now, I guess that's one interpretation of buying gold as a backup, but mostly it's a backup for personal emergencies and also for opportunities. A personal emergency, well, that might be something like a health issue or a job loss. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But an opportunity, well, that's going to be something like a real estate purchase. Maybe you're buying a house. Maybe you're buying some land. I like that better than thinking of it simply as a disaster planning method. There's just a lot more to metals than hedging against economic ruin and villainy. And real quick, before I get off into the stories, I picked up another buffalo last weekend on the price drop. and This was actually the cheapest buffalo that I've found in, I guess, well over a year. I've mentioned a few times that I'm working on a tube of these, and part of that is just that it's fun to have a target. But I'm going to come back to the reason for the tube in a minute. One of the things that comes up a lot is whether or not it makes sense to use metals to bank down payments for upcoming purchases. And we're going to say like a land deal or a new home, but it's anything really. The scale doesn't necessarily matter. It could be something smaller, but real estate is the usual example given. Let's just be really clear here. This is one of those areas that you simply should not take advice from a stranger on. It's also a place that a stranger just shouldn't be offering advice on because there's simply no way to know what's going to happen with the prices of metals. You could just as easily eat away some of that capital that you've been saving for that purchase. It all depends on timeline and really all I can tell you is how I've used it in the past. I have another story and then maybe a little bit about what I think about it going forward. Now, I've sold gold twice, and I put that cash toward real estate both times. I do not buy gold with the intent of selling it, but it was an easy decision in both of those cases. I'll come back. I'll explain why. But I also have a friend who sold his family home and converted the proceeds into precious metals. And he did that rather than leaving it in a savings account for the two years that he was planning to hold on to it. And I would say that that lines up pretty specifically with this topic. So we're going to start there. So the friend sold his home in 2014. I don't know if I should give the friend a fake name or not. I don't know what's weirder. Anyway, we'll just call him a friend. There are tax considerations that come with the sale of a property, but I'm not going to get into that. The relevant part here is that his family planned to move and they wouldn't be buying a new home for a few years. Long story short, he decided to convert a few hundred thousand dollars in proceeds into precious metals rather than keep that in his savings or drop it into the market. Now, I know about this because he reached out to bounce the idea off me. Now, he didn't know that I was into precious metals at the time. He certainly didn't know that I'd be talking about this on YouTube at some point, but we've got a few layers of anonymity here. Now, his rationale was that gold or silver would appreciate at a higher rate than a half a percent. A half a percent was what he could get in the best case scenario from his savings account. And for whatever reason, he didn't want to invest in an index fund. That was the first thing I asked. And earlier when I said that strangers shouldn't give advice on something like this, well, friends probably shouldn't either. Now we both knew that silver had dropped dramatically from the highs a few years earlier, so we probably both felt relatively confident that it wouldn't continue to go down, but I definitely wasn't confident enough in that to say, you know, yeah, sure, drop a few hundred thousand dollars on metals. I mean, that seems like a great plan. And don't get me wrong there, I'm not down on metals. I just think that personally I like to buy over time, my dollar cost average. And that diffuses a lot of the risk. It also means that I'm buying with money that I didn't really need for anything. I was a little bit more positive on gold at the time. I was pretty much neutral on silver, but it was his money. And I probably wouldn't have done it at the time myself because I'm pretty sure 2013 would have still been pretty fresh in my mind. Well, we can look back and see what happened between 2014 and 2016, and I know personally how it all turned out for him specifically, but before I get to that, again, let's just be clear here that this is an anecdote. It's one person's experience from a specific time and place, and this is not what you could expect to happen if you were to do it today. I don't want any subliminal messages stuck in there that tell you to do this. Anyway, I talked to him about the idea a few times, we texted a few times, and then I more or less forgot about it. 
Now, right around that time, I actually bought a property myself. I liquidated some gold to put toward a down payment. And that's part of what got me in the habit, or at least it kept me in the habit of buying every month. Some of it was that I was buying back what I had just sold. It's definitely what got me in the habit of only buying American Eagles. I will talk about that in a minute. Now, I wasn't buying metals as a savings account for other purchases, but it was definitely nice to have that option. Now, my sale resulted in a slight capital loss. It wasn't enough to make it worth the trouble for tax purposes, but liquidating the gold kept me from having to sell stock positions. And those stock positions, I would have owed capital gains on. So I saved a fair amount of money overall, even though I technically sold the metals at a loss. Just want to be clear there for the IRS. Now my story is about as boring as it gets, but part of that sale included some roosters, 20 francs roosters. I really should go back to that coin shop, do an interview with the owner that gave me such a hard time, because coin shop owners seem to be all the rage these days, and I figure me grilling the old guy for not taking my roosters would probably do pretty well. My friend still has a better story though, so back to that. In 2016, right around two years later, he liquidated the silver and he bought a home a few months after that. And he called me to tell me that he finally got out. His words were something like that. Now, I didn't even know that he got in, but he had purchased a large amount of silver. I won't give the exact amount, but it was six figures. And there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, he picked silver because it had fallen something like 60% by 2014 before leveling off. Now, he figured it was going to climb steadily back up. I don't think he thought it was going back to $48, but he thought it was on its way up. Now, he bought a little bit of gold as well, but I think it was, it was considerably less. It was something like 10 or 15% the value of the silver. And the important part here is that he bought all of it through a vault. And imagine most of the people who watch this channel prefer to hold physical gold rather than have it vaulted. A lot of you have said as much in the comments. And I'm that way up to a certain point, personally. I don't know what he paid at the time, but a vault will charge something like $10 a month for up to $100,000 of bullion storage. Now, your metals are insured, and you have the ability to buy from or sell to the vault directly. You can also have them ship. Now, all of those options, they're going to have their own fees, but if you don't want to worry about keeping, say, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of precious metals in a rental home that your landlord has the key to, well, it makes pretty good sense, and that was the situation his family was in. And then if you think logistically, well, they moved to a new city, and $100,000 of silver, well, that would have been about 5,000 ounces at that time. That's 343 pounds. That's 156 kilograms. Now, he had more than $100,000 into it. So again, the vault made pretty good sense. He wasn't going to be lugging around hundreds of pounds of silver. Now, vaults aren't something that I'm an expert on. I use a regional vault. I think that he used goldmoney.com. I'm not sure. I have no reason to tell you that goldmoney.com is a good option. I just, I'm pretty sure that's what he used. I could be wrong. The takeaway to me, and probably the part that we could have boiled this entire video down to, was that he ended up beating the savings rates that he had found, but just barely. After all the fees, he made a gain of around 2 to 2.5%. Two so it's about 1% per year, a little bit more than that, versus the half a percent that he could have gotten from the bank account. Now, gold did a little bit better than silver, but again, he had a much smaller percentage of gold. So this doesn't tell you what would happen in the future for you, but it's an interesting idea. Converting a large sum of cash into metals, one lump sum, well, that's pretty intriguing. Now, personally, I'd be nervous to do it if I needed to liquidate inside of two years. That's just too short of a time frame with metals. And I know he was a little bit nervous too because prices for both gold and silver declined in 2015. I think that's probably pretty important to note. So he rode that down for a solid year before finding the window to get out. If he didn't have that eventual timeline and that need, that deadline, because he was buying a house, well, it would have been a much easier situation. We all know where prices are at today. And in the end, he was fine. Buying the way he did through a vault with large bars, well, that kept his premiums way down. It would have been a much different story if he'd run down to the local coin shop and bought from the retail shelves. 
So my personal stories, they're just a lot less dramatic, but I'll just tell you about that second sale since I mentioned it. It was way easier than my first. Now, I wasn't planning for that sale just like I wasn't planning for my first, but I'd been working on tubes of American Gold Eagles this time around. I've just banked cash into metals incrementally over time, and then I've also bought more when it was convenient, when the prices made sense, or, or both. And prior to that sale, I'd been buying at 3% premium for one ounce American Gold Eagles, 8.5% for quarters. And it was that way up until about, I don't know, March of 2020. So I've been buying at a higher cost basis than that vault would give for a large bar form, but it, it wasn't terrible. And when I did sell some off again, I had absolutely no trouble with the Eagles. Selling them was very easy. And it was a much different case than my first go around because I had a lot of variety and those local shops, well, they weren't very excited about it. Now, I've never sold more than half of the gold that I had at any time, and I have been buying a little bit more lately to kind of get back some of what I sold, and that came maybe at a bad time because the last year and a half has been a different case for buying. Spot price has increased, premiums have definitely increased. It's a much more expensive time to be buying than it was a few years ago. It does seem worth it though. The potential for needing that backup, I guess that feels a little bit more likely than it did a few years ago too as well. So back to these buffaloes. I mean, that's really the fun part of this. I buy these because I enjoy them and they're a little bit different than the Eagles for me because honestly, I've never been super excited about the aesthetics of the American Gold Eagle. They've been a little bit more of a tool and I've been buying other variety lately, but I do have that base of Eagles and I'd like to have a tube of buffaloes, which I know will do just as well in a sale here as those eagles would. And then some of these other coins that I've been buying, well, they're a little further down the line of what I'd ever sell if I needed to. I'm still not planning to sell anything, nothing's changed there, but I do think that it's just a good idea to have it all in order. That makes that unlikely sale as easy as possible. It also makes sense to control your acquisition cost, and that's the part that I've probably been doing a pretty poor job with lately. But it's also some of what's keeping it fun, and sometimes that is a very big part of sticking with something. Now, saving, it just isn't fun, it isn't interesting, but saving in gold, well, that is, at least it is for me. Now, I haven't been watching the time, but I feel like this one has gone long, so let's call it good there. Let us know in the comments what you think. If you're using metals to build up, maybe store some value to put toward a house or land, I would love to hear about it. And if nothing else, let me know what you think I should switch to once I fill this tube of buffaloes. I think I have two or three left, depending on whether or not I include the proof. And while you're there, be sure to hit that like button. And if you enjoy the topic, make sure you're subscribed. And if you're still here, thank you again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.